Who are the great crowd? Are they, as some argue, a class of Christians with an earthly hope, as opposed to a few Christians with a heavenly hope? Are they not children of God? Are they outside of the new covenant? Are they not part of the royal priesthood and the holy nation of that covenant? Revelation is a highly symbolic book, and there are probably thousands of interpretations that have been offered up over the centuries. It would take much more than a few minutes to offer a definitive interpretation of Revelation. However, a little examination can reveal answers to the questions that we have opened with. Revelation 7 does show that there are two groups of survivors of the Great Tribulation. First, John sees 144,000 who come out of every tribe of Israel, 12,000 out of each tribe. Logically, if each group of 12,000 are out of each tribe, there would be some of that tribe who were not sealed. Revelation is a symbolic book full of signs and symbols, seven trumpet blasts, seven bowls of anger, seven eyes, seven flames, 24 elders, 144 cubits, 666, and so forth. So if Revelation is a symbolic number, would it really come to us as a surprise? The next group John sees is in verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great crowd that no one was able to number, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, dressed in white robes and with palm branches in their hands. And they were crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. Let us continue in verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are dressed in white robes, who are they, and from where have they come? And I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Because of this they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. Who are the great crowd? Notice verse 15, that they serve him day and night in his temple. In his temple. Some try to say that the great crowd are merely on the temple grounds, perhaps in an outer courtyard, not inside the temple. But is this true? In the common Greek language the New Testament was written in, there are two words related to the temple, Hiron and Naos. Hiron refers to the entire property related to the temple to the entire precinct, which included the sanctuary, courts, and other buildings. The Temple of Jerusalem consisted of the whole of the sacred enclosure, embracing the entire aggregate of buildings, balconies, porticos, courts. An example of this is when Jesus threw the money changers from the temple. He was throwing them from the heron, that is, the temple grounds. The word naos was used at the temple at Jerusalem, but only of the sacred edifice or sanctuary itself, consisting of the holy place and the holy of holies. Are the great crowd in the Heron or naos? Does it make a difference? The temple and the law were a shadow of the reality belonging to the Christ. Some interpret the holy place as the state of being a son of God while on earth, part of the royal priesthood, that the curtain is Christ's sacrifice, and the holy of holies is heaven itself, and the presence of God Almighty. Therefore, when such children of God are raised to heavenly life, it could be said that they pass from the holy place to the holy of holies. If the great crowd are in a naos, in the holy place, as opposed to merely in a heron, for instance, in a courtyard, that would mean that they in time would pass through the curtain and be raised to life in the anti-typical holy of holies, heaven itself. What do we find upon examining the Greek? We find that indeed the great crowd are in the naos. They are in the temple sanctuary itself. Because of the theological implications of the great crowd serving inside the temple, some still argue that the great crowd serve outside the temple sanctuary in the temple courtyard, that somehow this is what John means. But notice Revelation 11:2, And leave out the courtyard outside the temple, and do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will trample the holy city for forty-two months. Therefore, the courtyard was outside the temple, to be distinguished from the naos itself. 
we can safely conclude then that the great crowd does not serve in a courtyard, they serve in the temple. If we go back to Revelation 7.15, let us zone in on the word serve. In Greek, the word is latruo. In the New Testament, it means to render religious service or homage to worship. It also means to perform sacred services, to offer gifts, to worship God in observance of the rites instituted for his worship, a priest, to officiate, to discharge the sacred office. The great crowd performs sacred service day and night in the temple. Here's a question. Who renders sacred service day and night in a temple? Is it not a priest? Are the great crowd therefore not performing priestly duties? Let us note the book of First Peter. And you yourselves, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And in verse 9, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's possession, so that you may proclaim the virtues of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, the ones who were not shown mercy, but now are shown mercy. Would these passages not apply to the great crowd? Here the Apostle Peter describes Christianity as a priesthood of believers who offer spiritual sacrifices, and as living stones, they make up a spiritual temple. Here Peter describes two categories, darkness, light, not a people, the people of God, not shown mercy, those shown mercy, light, being the people of God, being shown mercy. These are the benefits given to the children of God, to those inside the new covenant, part of the priesthood of believers. These are all the blessings that the great crowd experiences. Otherwise, they would be in darkness, not the people of God, not shown mercy. From this, we can see that they are not a secondary class of Christians with a lesser hope, apart from the 144,000. They are children of God, inside the new covenant arrangement, and part of the royal priesthood and the holy nation God has called out of the world.